Hi kids, it's Miss Julie and I'm here today to do a very special draw along with you, the Narwhal. This one's special because I was asked by so many kids to do a Narwhal and my own Sparklots decided to um, develop this project just for you. So I wanted to show you um, their project ideas. So here's one of them, super happy smiling Narwhal. And here is the other. So today we're going to draw this sea creature and then we're going to draw a treasure chest and we'll create an underwater um, paradise for our narwhal to swim in. I'm going to pretend that our narwhal, our narwhal actually got out of the Arctic, which is where they live, and kind of stumbled into a coral reef, kind of went and took a little holiday. So what you're going to need today is white paper, you're going to need a sharpie, and you're going to need something to color with. So are you ready? We're going to get started. So first I want you to take your marker and go to one side of the paper and we're going to start with the horn, which is actually not a horn at all. It's a tooth. So I'm going to start way over here. I'm going to draw a line coming way in. That is as long as my narwhal horn is going to be or its tooth. And then I'm going to come in and basically draw as close to the other one as I can and draw a curved line to connect it. Now this is a little bit like a unicorn so I want you to go ahead and draw some curved lines because their, um, their horn slash tooth is a spiral just like that. So we're going to go ahead and draw its back now and in the middle of drawing the back we're going to stop to draw its flipper and then we're going to keep going. So I want you to start not at where this curve is but a little bit in and draw a long curved line for the back and then I want you to stop. We're going to draw the back flipper and it's shaped like a leaf so we're going to bring our marker in the middle, draw a line going out and then in for its flipper and then we're going to finish our back line. Now our line ended right here so I want you to figure out where the line would come out. I want you to curve the line a little bit and then we're going to give the first part of its tail which is a little bit like another leaf. I'm going to do the other part of its tail so go out and then in and then I'm going to stop because we're going to come all the way back here to the front and we're going to draw the underside. So my line started here so it's start here on the other side of the horn and I'm going to draw a line and it's going to come down and then it's going to stop and it's going to stop because we're going to do the stomach kind of the belly portion which is a different color in two lines. So from here we're going to draw a rainbow. It's not going to go way up but it's going to go up just a little bit. It's going to go up and it's going to connect with the tail. So keep going all the way connect it. And now I'm going to draw a smile line here and it's going to connect to. And this is going to give our narwhal two different colors, kind of the top half and the bottom half. Um, now you can decide, is your narwhal smiling? Is it frowning? I'm going to give mine a little bit of a wavy line that's going to come all the way up so he's smiling. And you can choose a little rainbow eye or you can draw a bigger eye. And the way you draw the bigger eye is by drawing so to the side of the horn or the tooth, you can draw a circle, draw a circle around it, and you might accidentally run into that circle and that's okay, do your best. And then on the inside, we're gonna draw a curved line and another curved line and color in black. So this is gonna allow part of our eye to be white and part to be black and giving it a reflection point, kind of where the light hits it. The other thing that the narwhal has is these squished oval markings starting at the head and going all the way until the tail. So go ahead and draw some squished ovals. You can see they're like flat, like if you sat on a circle and they don't have to go in a straight line and skip over your flipper 
keep going all the way to the tail. They can run into each other a little bit. They can be spread apart. Doesn't matter. And guess what? You already have your narwhal. Gee, this was going to be an easy one. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a little tiny treasure chest down here because it's kind of fun to do. And I'm going to start with a rainbow line. And I'm going to connect those two lines just like that. I'm gonna draw two little tiny lines coming down and connect them again. This will be the metal bar. So I'll draw some little dots along the edges to show that this is kind of a different part of my treasure chest. Then I'm gonna draw two more lines on either side and connect them. I'm gonna go ahead and do a handle because I would wanna lift up my treasure chest and the easiest way to do it is to draw a U, draw another U underneath it, and then take these lines out to the side and connect them. Take these two lines out to the side and connect them, and you have your handle. To draw the other side of the treasure chest, I want you to take this at the very top and extend the line out just a little bit, extend the line out just a little bit, and make a curved line coming down, and that's how you know where to keep going with this line. Zoop, just like that. From this point, draw a line going down just a little bit, and then you can go ahead and connect these two lines and you have the front of your treasure chest. So I want to make sure this band goes all the way in the front too. So I'm going to draw a parallel line. So a line going along the same way, just below this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some dots on it as well. And then I'm gonna put my wood marks to make it look like it was made out of wood. So I'm gonna draw some lines going straight down on the top part and underneath here where, the, where the, uh, the handle is. But these lines on the top aren't gonna come straight down, they're gonna follow the curve. So this line curves so that these lines are going to curve also. Curve, curve. These lines down here can go straight. So this line curves, it stops. These lines can go straight and it makes it look like our treasure chest is kind of sitting at a little bit of an angle. Okay, got my narwhal, got my treasure chest. I'm gonna add a underwater cave. So I don't know what's down here, but somewhere over here, I'm going to draw a big curved line and I'm gonna draw another one on the inside and I'm going to go ahead and color this in And you can draw eyes in yours if you want, but I'm gonna color this in and make up a story as for who is living inside this underwater cave. Okay, now it looks kind of like I have a narwhal in the middle of the paper, I have a treasure chest, everything's floating, so let's try to put it together. So here's my treasure chest. The first thing I'm gonna do is draw my horizon line. So I'm gonna take my treasure chest and on the side here, not at the bottom, but at the side, I'm gonna draw a line that goes off the paper. And then I'm gonna draw the line at the same, the same level on the other side. And it's gonna go until it runs into something. And then it might have to stop and it might have to start again way over here. Now I have ground. And I'm gonna start drawing some wavy lines for some rocks. So I might draw some hills and it'll go until it runs into something. I might draw another hill. This one runs into my narwhal. I'll pretend that it goes here and I'll use my finger to guess and it'll come down here. And I'll draw some more wavy lines and this might be coral, this might be rocks. And you can decide when you are coloring your scene what these are 
and then if you want to go ahead and add some seaweed this is the perfect time so right here I'm gonna add some seaweed and it's gonna start at the ground and it's gonna come up and it's going to bump into my narwhal come out on the other side and it's gonna curve the whole time and that's gonna make it look like these pieces are swaying in the water Go up and on the other side, come to a point, curve back around, and come down. And always try to draw more than one when you're drawing. So don't just draw one blade or one part of the seaweed and then um, leave it. But I'm gonna draw some over here too. Again, I'll stop if I run into something. And I'm not gonna just draw this one, I'm going to make sure I have at least three going. Let me draw one in the middle here. And lastly, I think I'll draw a couple over here, and these will kind of go off the page. And one more here. Okay, I think I'll draw a little sea star down here. You might be drawing crabs. You can draw fish. That is a funny looking sea star. And I'm going to go ahead and draw some fish. I'll draw two fish over here to give him someone to swim with. And this one I'm gonna draw, he's gonna be curved. Give him his fins eyes and then finally up here I'm gonna draw a little bit of land that you can kind of see the bottom of I'm gonna make that land brown kind of almost like islands and that's it so now you can get out your crayons and get ready to color now my narwhal is going to be gray because I want there to be a lot of color in the background so I might not choose um, grays and browns for my rocks I think I'm gonna choose brighter colors and make it look like he really stumbled into a coral reef and I'm gonna choose to leave the belly and these spots white though you might have a lot of fun coloring them in with rainbow colors if you're ever worried about coloring over something that you want to have white you can always use a white crayon to color those first that way if your other colors of crayons go on top of them they're less likely to have the color show up so that's a trick Okay, so this gray isn't super exciting for this picture. So I really want to go in and um, put some color in here. And I have some different colors of green. So I want my seaweed to be green today, but I'm not gonna use just one color of green. I'm gonna spread this color out. So this color of green, I'm going to do over here also. And then I'm gonna do in that third patch too. Over here, I'm gonna make two of these pieces be this color. I'm gonna come over here and make only one of the pieces be this color. And then I'm gonna switch greens. So this is a fun way if you have a lot of green in the background, you're doing a forest, you're doing a lot of plants, to kind of change up the greens that you use. That way if you have a lot of green, it still looks really different. And I will come and do one over here. And then I'm gonna pick one more green and I'm gonna pick a really super light green. This is almost yellow. It's a neon color here.
Okay, so I have my seaweed. I think I'm going to start coloring these rocks, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna use grays and browns. I'm gonna do something completely different and I am gonna use bright colors in the background here. And this was, this is this orange rock kind of peeking through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my orange over here for my fish too. And let's see, use this magenta color for this rock. Now you might be, you might be choosing um, to make your narwhal more realistic and be in the Arctic. You're gonna have a lot of grays, a lot of browns, a lot of different shades of blue. So yours might look very different from mine. Okay. I think I am going to use um, a really light brown down here for the sand though. color really lightly down here and on the other side and then I'm going to choose to make this a little bit darker so I'm using the same crayon but I'm creating two very different colors okay And I'm going to keep going with my all sorts of colors back here. I'm got, I have purple, which will look really interesting up against that orange. And I think I had a dark purple. And I'm going to use this purple to color the rest of my fish. One fish will be purple. I think I'll bring back that lighter purple and do the other fish. So I'm making sure that colors appear more than once in my piece. And then I have gold that I'm going to use for this metal bar on my treasure chest. And if I color really lightly, gold can be a really pretty tan for the land that's kind of up here, that's kind of poking through. And I have one more color here. I'm gonna choose something completely different or maybe I'll use this magenta and bring the color over here also. Okay, time to color my water. Whoops, I forgot my treasure chest. Goodness, okay, I knew I had a dark brown around here. I would have noticed when I colored my water blue and there was this glowing white treasure chest in the bottom of my art. Okay, now I'm going to do my water. And because I put so many things in the background, there's not as much water to color here. And that can kind of save your hand a little bit if your hand gets tired from, from coloring this much. And if your hand also gets tired, you can color a little bit lighter. Apply less pressure to your crayon, just get a light color going back and forth. And now that I'm putting the blue in, 
all these colors, it really looks like this Norwell has stumbled into this um, underwater and very colorful paradise. Let's bring out the water under here. Just kind of poking through. And then I'm deciding if I want to leave my narwhal's horn white or if I'd like to turn it into a, um, a different color. And I think what I really want to do is take this yellow and make it look like it's glowing. Okay, everyone, that's it for today for our Narwhal, and I'll give you a couple of examples of other colors. So here's another one that I did with the same color scheme. And here is uh, one of my sparklets, and she did a purple treasure chest, and she even put a star at the end of hers to show that it's glowing. And then here's another one, and this one has a rainbow eye and a school of fish. Um, swimming around in different types of coral um, as well. So I hope you had a lot of fun drawing your narwhal in your underwater paradise and until next time.